probably a good thing the markets are closed or Good Friday because I, I don't know whether they'd have the same result they did yesterday when we were soaring on relief that this probe appears to be over because right now, if I'm reading correctly, it is not. Former South Carolina Congressman, Fox News contributor, Trey Gowdy. Congressman, good to have you. Um, what do you make of this? The back and forth, the request for hearing, the request for more uh, witnesses to appear on Capitol Hill and then Republicans uh, who want to get investigations going about what started the investigation. Yeah, Neil, I was in a really small universe of people that did not think this report should be made public. I didn't think it was going to change anyone's mind, and I didn't think it was going to resolve anything. And for once in my life, I was right. It's a resolve nothing. You're going to have two more years of investigations. They're not going to go forward with impeachment because that's dicey, but they are going to go forward with investigations on four or five different House committees, and the, the, the verdict will be rendered in November of 2020. You know what I'm curious about, and you know obviously a lot more about the process than I do, the Attorney General has already promised to the committee heads that they could see a largely completely unredacted report. I guess about 20 percent was blocked out in this report, or 10 percent, I should say, much less than f folks thought. And that apparently is not good enough. Um, is that because the suspicion is that the whole thing is going to be leaked out, period? No, I think it is because it's got us talking. It's the same reason Adam Schiff claimed he wanted to investigate Russia, but took four months to give us his witness list. He wouldn't even assign people to the, to the committee to, to conduct the investigation. They want this to last as long as it possibly can. Jerry Nadler should know that it is against the law for Bill Barr to share everything with him. You cannot give grand jury material. Barr's already offered to let a select number, and the fewer that see it, the less likely it is to leak. But say the gang of eight, the gang of eight in the House can look at a, an almost completely unredacted. That's not going to be enough. They're going to want to see the underlying data. They're going to want to see the documents. They're going to want to read the witness transcripts because the objective is not a resolution. The objective is to make this an issue until the fall of 2020. Were you surprised by um, anything you read in the report? Mitt Romney is among those out saying uh, that, that the, the course and tone of this was something um, he, he was not a fan of. Glad it's behind him, but he, he criticized the president and those around him. What about you? Um, I was not surprised because this report was not written for the public. It was written for the attorney general, and it was the attorney general and a whole bunch of my Republican former colleagues that thought it would be a really neat idea to share a, an, an oppo research piece on someone who was not indicted. The Department of Justice doesn't do research papers. They either issue indictments or they do not. Clearly, he didn't have enough evidence on collusion. And what I would say with respect to Mueller is if you have enough on obstruction, then charge him and then let a jury of 12 decide whether or not your evidence carries the burden of persuasion. But what we have now is a hung jury. He's going to lay out all the evidence he has. There's no resolution. Half the country is going to think the president obstructed justice. The other half is going to think he didn't. There's no resolution. So, so why issue the report? You don't do it in any other. The president's not above the law, but he ain't below the law either. Find me another American other than what Jim Comey did to Hillary Clinton that has had an oppo research paper investigated by the Department of Justice, no charges, and then disseminated. You know, you, you, you could be right. He might have just punted and let Congress do its job or, or, or think that Congress could when in the report, as you know, and you've probably read it, that the president's conduct, and I quote here, presents difficult issues that prevent us from conclusively determining that no criminal conduct occurred. That's almost begging for Congress to do something. Do you think that was his intent? Well, let me give you the other side of it, Neil. Um, this is a counterintelligence investigation that became public. It is a criminal investigation where there's a presumption of guilt. You've got Adam Schiff saying he had evidence before he interviewed a single witness. You have 60 House Democrats that voted to move forward with impeachment before Bob Mueller uttered a single solitary syllable. So there's nothing normal about this. And if you were accused of treason, and you had a, I mean, imagine being accused of treason, a crime for which you can be put to death. Where the line is between vigorously defending yourself and crossing the line over into obstruction, 
I mean, how would you react to leaks on the front page of the Post and the Times? There's nothing traditional about this case, and therefore the president's reaction was not traditional. I'm not defending it. Right. I'm saying this. I'd rather have his facts than the prosecution's facts. And if you feel good about your obstruction case, then charge him. All right. So the fact that he was looking to supposedly fire Bob Mueller and later on get Jeff Sessions to essentially do the same thing, that n neither happened. In the end, it, obviously, Mueller stayed, completed his report. Some have likened to that to be obstructing justice or the process of justice. Obviously, it was a jump ball for uh, Mueller and his team. What do you think of that? Um, I, I hope we have not gotten to the point where thinking about doing something as a crime in this country. I, I, I hope that's not where we are, or discussing what your options are with your advisors. Well, the um, only thing that prevented the, the, that from happening, as you know, Congressman, is, is, is that uh, the, the aides didn't do it, right? It, it, they didn't do it. Right. And he didn't fire the aide and go get a, an aide that would. So, Fair point. Fair so point. Uh, again, I, I, I would say this. You're being charged with treason. This is the most non-traditional investigation I have ever seen. Everything is made public, whereas in real, the real world, none of this would be made public. You're accused of treason. How vigorously are you going to defend yourself, Neil? I would Fair defend enough. myself pretty vigorously when it's a third legal, a third political, a third communications. Look, I'm sensitive to the legal part, but this was a political investigation, or part of it was political from day one. And, and when you got 60 people saying you should be impeached before Bob Mueller has issued a single syllable of his report, then this is not a legal investigation. It's a quasi-political one, and he responded accordingly. Congressman, thank you for taking the time. I do appreciate it. Yes, sir. Happy Easter.